Um, I came across a whole host of sites. I've posted a link to one of them above. Now, yeah, you might say um, the BBC can't always be trusted. Uh, I think you'd have a difficult argument in that, but people can click on that and see what they like. It's better than Fox News. But, but no, Hamza, it is not the issue of what the penalty of rape is. You shifted the ground there. I'm not going to allow you to do that. We bring it back to what you said earlier. You sure. said that the death penalty, in your view, was appropriate for blasphemy and apostasy. Now, don't try and say, oh, well, you know, what about rapes in European countries and whatever? No. Yes. Let's try yeah, blasphemy. Not... I, I, I want to touch on blasphemy. I, I, right? said, I said violent apostasy when it's killing other people. I, no, I'm interested in no, blasphemy because blasphemy just, doesn't... Okay, well, can, I, can, I, can I clarify? Blasphemy doesn't hurt anyone, right? Yeah, and neither does difference. apostasy. Yeah, well, quite right. and apostasy should not be criminal because they are not violent. Violence is criminal. Violence should be criminalized, yes. But apostasy should not be because apostasy is not violent. Neither is blasphemy. Blasphemy is a victimless crime. Apostasy, ap excuse me, apostasy apost is just realizing that you know more than you did. Sure. Well, guys, just to clarify again, I've mentioned at least three times, the view that I take if the apostate turns violently against the community. Okay. Uh, take out the violence. Non-violent apostasy. Is it ever acceptable to kill a human being for any crime at all? The view that I take is a take that the, the violent apostate is the one that is a crime. The other one is not. The word yes fits in here much shorter. Yeah, well, they, is it acceptable to kill a human being for what they do or do not believe ever? Uh, Regardless no, of the other circumstances. No, it's not. You know, actually, you know, the, th the, th the problem with the uh, only violent apostates argument, I mean, I know that you, uh, I I've argued with many Muslims uh, and cited uh, Al-Tabari and uh, Ibn Ashaq and uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, and one by one they've, uh, like, like the Russians when no Napoleon was invading, they burned down their cities so that I can't use them against the supplies there against them. But here's the thing, uh, as many of those as you'd have to explain away, uh, you, you, I mean, you basically have to eliminate all of them to get rid of the precedent of Muhammad, his companions, and his successors uh, using violence uh, preemptively against people who were never Muslims and also using it against people who had left the religion and where there was no record of them uh, engaging in any violence. They, they just left and didn't look back. Sure. Uh, at, so, at that time, at that time... Can I, can I just... I, I, I will no, wait, wait, answer, wait, 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 wait. I really wait, want to hear the answer. Wait, I will. Yeah, I know you will, and I will do it, but... Uh, again, I've got notification that my four-hour uh, time limit is up on this video call. I'm going to end the call and start it straight away. Don't go away. We will ba be back. Do we want to take a bathroom break while that's going on? Uh, <laughs> it won't last that long. We'll be straight okay. back. It's Tony. He uh, when he reset it. On, it uh, okay, not a problem. No, I'll be going. Hamza, um, I really didn't do that deliberately. I, honestly, I just got that message. So uh, please, uh, a Fismo's uh, point. Yeah, I mean, look, when we look at violence or physical violence in Islam, we have to see that it comes under a category called jihad, as you well known. It's a very well known used term <laughs> in the West. And what you have to understand that the practices of jihad under the Islamic tradition and the actions of the Prophet, peace be upon, be upon him, come under two categories. And the two categories under the category of jihad is a defensive jihad and an offensive jihad. Now the defensive jihad is, you only have to really rationalize it, it's like in line with Article 51 of the UN Charter that every single or collective has a right to defend themselves. Now the contention by most people, including yourself, is like, oh there's an offensive jihad element. Now jihad in and of itself is not just a physical struggle, it's more of a political social struggle as well. The maqsad in Arabic, which basically means the objective of jihad, is actually to have a free pathway to communicate Islam with the wider society because what, 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 what the Muslim community views, and this is in a very hypothetical scenario that there's an Islamic state, which I don't believe there's an Islamic state, but if that was the case, that offensive jihad is basically a means to remove the obstacles to this, this, this communication for da'wah, which basically means the propagation of the Islamic faith. That does not always have to end violently or physically, and it doesn't kill, and there's a lot of conditions to that. For instance, 
you can't kill trees, you can't kill women, you can't kill children, you can't kill old men, you can't kill monks, it's only armed combatants. So it's basically something similar to liberal interventionism. Liberal interventionism is a well-known foreign policy concept that you could basically invade or kill other armies in order to basically intervene. <laughs> yeah. Um, so essentially it's similar to that. And also what we would argue is, is um, one of the main reasons that the Islamic entity used to do that was actually to remove oppression. This is why there's many like almost German poets, they used to write in Europe, you know, they used to pray that the Turkish horse would drink from the river, river Rhine. This is why the Jewish historian Zayn Zohar, he basically said when the Muslims crossed the Straits of Gibraltar, the Jews saw the Muslims as liberators. You have the academic study by A.S. Tritton called Umar and his non-Muslim subjects. I think we're um, drifting off subject here. Yeah, Very I'm just asking a question yes. about yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Hamza, the, the point, Every time the, the I want to roll and I sound good, you stop me, man. Oh, I know. That is because you're <laughs> rambling on, 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 on irrelevance. I want to... I, want uh, to uh, I mean... Uh, uh, one, one, one second, then. I just, I just want to... Uh, Thunder was right. I think we have moved somewhat off topic. Um, uh, let's let, let get me back to this simple. issue, okay? Now, if Sharia courts in other countries are imposing the death penalty, what I want to understand from you uh, and as I say, I can provide with. Can I, guys, can, I stop you? Can, I go, can I go for wee wee? Well, no, please. <laughs> you wait, no, wait, hold on. <laughs> one each let's, it's only speak. human to allow him to use the restroom. I, see I you think so. Uh, oh, I'm yes, sorry. I didn't, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. I, My son yeah. says, Baba. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I do apologize, of course. Okay, just give me two minutes, yeah? Uh, because like, what's the, we have to wash our slides off. Not that you may not give me a little bit. So we're still so I'm, I, I, I'm also <laughs> conscious of the time. I don't know uh, how long I, I really want to keep this going on. I, I do want to wrap it up, but I, I think that the closing point that I wish to make is that uh, it's one that Thunder touched upon before. It is that um, even if his interpretation of uh, Sharia law is somewhat different um, to other people's, the fact is that Sharia courts are looking at the same book um, and coming up with um, death penalties, and I, I, as I say, I, I would just like him to confirm again if he hasn't done it enough already that he thinks that, that is an appropriate um, sentence to be. I, I I would like um, to touch on two points. The first is the um, one that Almighty touched on, which is Muhammad, who is supposedly the guy who has the most insight into Sharia was all for the proactive um, uh, use of killing apostates. Um, and if it was okay for Muhammad, then why isn't it okay for everyone else? I, I, I mean, I, I suspect we know what the answer is, but I don't want to preempt it. Um, um, yeah. and, and, and the second one is this, I, I really want to go on to blasphemy, because, yeah, particularly, mm. sort of, how many copies of the Quran do I have to burn before I should be sentenced to death? Mm. Okay. Well, um, I think once we've touched those issues, uh, I know I had another caller waiting. Uh, I'm somewhat reluctant, given the time, um, to bring you into the call. Um, I don't know, what do people think? Should we get one more caller in? It is an hour and a half after when we should have finished. Yes, well, yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how we get on. Um, I'm certainly getting a little bit tired now, I'm afraid. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll uh, wait for um, Hamza to come back, um, and then we'll really try and pick up where we left off. What's really amazing to me is we only have we have like two hundred and eighty people watching this show. I really expected to have like record numbers for this. Yeah, show. Yeah. I mean, there may there may be a number of reasons for that, and one of it, one of which may be the fact that um, people now realise that they can actually watch the show on YouTube because all uh, shows are now uploaded, um, hopefully in high definition and with a much better um, sound quality. And I, I've certainly personally received a couple of messages saying, "Oh, thank God, I, I you know I can watch it on YouTube now rather than actually having to uh, be there live." So that may be one reason, but I. Like you, are, and I'm somewhat surprised that it's... Yeah, especially since you know, somebody said with zero notice, what did you expect? I mean, we did do a promotional video for this two weeks ago. And, and, and also, when you say zero notice, I mean, we're here every two weeks at the same uh, time. Actually, we've been here uh, every week for the last three weeks. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people, I don't know. Well, we need, that's that's obviously something we need to look into. If, if people are saying, oh, I didn't know about it, then sure. Um, send us a message uh, to any of us. Um, Aaron, Thunder, myself, um, Mighty, um, through YouTube. Yeah. Uh, we, do, we do read things. We don't, might not necessarily respond to all of them, but we do read them. Well, somebody must have a point about the marketing if, if they're still not figuring it out after after Skeptic and, and Ferengula and and uh, all these other sites post, you know, my invitation to Hamza to be on the show and, and still nobody sees it, I guess they, have, they must have a point. We yeah. should have stood on the top of a hill and told people that bandits were attacking. <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. <laughs> Yeah, after um, getting divine revelations from. Um... Hi guys. Hey. Hey. Ah, oh, you're back. Um, so I had so like. I've, I've just got. I, we're gonna we're gonna try and bring this to a close fairly uh, soon, um, Hamza. I just wanted to um, clarify one point and make sure that we're in agreement on this, and then I think Thunder's got uh, maybe one point. Um, I'm sorry, uh, for DPR. If we're short on time, we had that one last guest. Uh, peace to you all. Let's try to get them on. Yeah, we'll, we'll certainly do that. Um, I just wanted to uh, confirm with you, um, Hamza, just so there is no misunderstanding about that. The, the situation is that there are certain, and it, you appear to have frozen for me. Is everything still working all right? This video yeah, periodically freezes, oh, yeah, but yeah, it there we go. has audio. Um, um, the, whether you agree with it or not, and I think you've already answered to something, extent this question but whether you agree with it or not you have to accept that there are some courts operating under sharia law that are reaching judgments which as i say you may not be satisfied with but they include the stoning to death of adulterers blasphemers and so on and so forth right so that may be not your interpretation of sharia law but you've got to accept that this does happen and how can you say that your interpretation is better than theirs. Um, just like you could say, you know, the only way we know that a judgment in British law, for example, is a good judgment is because we have appeal courts, we have a assurance body, etc. Unfortunately, in these countries, we don't have that type of assurance body. If we were to to, to have one, it would be similar to like any other legal system, that just like the West. Yeah, uh, Hamza, um, your not video's not that, showing... Does not, not only does that not answer the question, um, again, you're just shifting ground. Do you want to actually try and answer the question? Yeah, what, what, okay, it's just like, it's just question. another variation of the question, why is your religion better than other religions? Uh, assuming you can answer that to our satisfaction, and not to get distracted, but I don't really feel, feel that you did. Within the religion, which, uh, within the deen, which sect and which interpretation, which madhab, which, uh, jurisprudence and so forth. It's, it's basically a variation of the same question. How do we know that your interpretation is better than the others? Well, it's basically because we refer it back to the two traditions, which is namely the Quran and the Sunnah. The prophetic and teaching. these other people don't? I, I should point out that you did put a little bit of space between yourself and the Sunnah when the issue of apostasy came up, because there are a lot of verses about uh, preemptive strikes against nonviolent apostates, and I think that's seems to me that's why you anticipated uh, casting aspersions on at least some of the Hadiths. Uh, no. So if, if someone else took all those Hadiths and didn't uh, make any attempt to uh, declare them to be inauthentic with any agenda in mind, I would say that theirs would be more accurate. Yeah, I mean, see, just like I said before, like we have kids in, in England when they go to sh scholars and they say, but Sheikh, scholar, there's this particular tradition and it says this. And the scholar always replies, since when was Islam just one particular tradition? So the point but is... I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting yeah. the interlocking... I mean, for example, there are a lot of stories from the, the Hadith. There was this one story about uh, uh, a goat eating certain... Pa getting into the house and eating uh, portions of Uthman's uh, authenticated uh, uh, or official edition of the Quran when he compiled it during his caliphate. Now that's a lone verse and it's kind of a silly story, so I wasn't going to bring it up because, you know, it's, it's sort of easy to take a single hadith and get rid of it. But we're not talking about one particular tradition. We're talking about, of the, the six uh, primary uh, Sunnah collections, there are a great deal of verses. Uh, and this is just like, a, you know, many different interlocking. And if you look at, 
for example, uh, the way uh, Muhammad al Bukhari, uh, you know, put these together, it's surely a method that's going to include some flaws. But what's interesting is uh, Muhammad al Bukhari used the same approach to examining his religion and the life of the Prophet the way that I would, which was you use, even with these stories, if that's the only evidence you get, you make the most of it and try to decide, okay, from what we know, how many different interlocking stories do we have? Uh, if, if someone tells a, uh, uh, gives a narration and then it turns out something's factually ac inaccurate, it's tossed out, and then that person's testimony is never used again. So while I'm sure that there are some flaws that uh, have gotten into it, frankly, I trust Muhammad al-Bukhari's method of uh, uh, of investigation far more than I will ever trust uh, a Moses or a Jesus or a Muhammad who says that they have divine revelation. Okay. So what I'm saying is, uh, while I'm sure that there are some hadith that are inauthentic, genuinely, uh, and then there's some uh, hadith that are admittedly weak, I will say that, even, even if they contain some really juicy bits that I'd like to use against the religion, quite frankly. But... Um, it just seems that the overwhelming narrative from the the, the Sahih collections, the other four collections, uh, the official histories, is one that uh, is much harsher and much more casually violent than the the interpretation that you seem to have. See, when when you when we uh, sort of back you into a corner and and want you to sort of nail your colors, post your colors to the mass, there there's this moment of squeamishness. Uh, where you say, well, you know, we throw them off a cliff. And then, you know, that, that goes back to what DPR was saying, in that I think that you are a more moral person than the entity that you worship, because you're, you have some hesitation before throwing uh, people off a cliff, but apparently uh, the, the divine forces that have ordered you to do so don't have this hesitation, don't feel any pity or sorrow or remorse uh, at the thought of throwing someone off a cliff. No, so I it seems the, that the, the harsher... I'll, I'll mind you, I'm, I'm going to bring in the last caller. I, I do apologize. Sure. But, uh, well, I think, I think he should be able to respond before we bring in yeah, the next caller. Yeah, sure. If you, if you wanted to respond, Hamza, please do. But uh, then next caller, and then we'll have final statements. If, yeah, basically, the, the, the thing I like to say is this, is that, that it's very nice the way you put it, very rhetorical. But in reality, look, let's, let's look at it from a social constructive perspective. In Tibet, in the 1930s, according to certain literature, what they used to do is when they had newborn babies, they used to dip them in freezing cold water. For the Western mindset, we'll be like, oh my God, that's absolutely barbaric and crazy. But they argue, wait, they say, wait a minute, if they couldn't survive the freezing cold water now, they would die in the Himalayan winters. You may disagree with that, whatever the case may be. But Buddhists, especially Tibetan Buddhists, are more compassionate than the fellow Westerner. Yeah? We know this because the tradition is highly compassionate. Yeah. So the point I here disagree. Is, I'm sorry. Uh, the Dalai fine. Lamas in the medieval well, era used to pluck out people's <laughs> eyes and chop off people's feet. That's really more of a modern perception. They were extremely brutal. Who were? Uh, the Dalai Lamas and, and the Tibetan monks. I mean, uh, this is kind of a blind spot. Uh, it, it, there's a lot of uh, yeah, outpouring of sympathy for Tibet because of their situation, but the, 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 the Dalai Lamas were horrible people. If, if the current Dalai Lama is in fact a reincarnation of the previous Dalai Lamas, we should put him on trial at The Hague. That's all I'm saying. 